operations control. Confirmed. Strike personnel on site. Yes, sir. Forensics. Confirmed. Captain. Evidence response found some fibers on the roof they want us to see. You want me to get the tag team ready? No, let's wait and see what it is first. Right. Sorry about what happened with Fury. No. Thank you. Records. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? Strike units, 25th floor. Whoa, whoa, big guy. I just want you to know, Cap. I said, Personal! <laughs> Kind of feels personal. Drop the shield, put your hands in the air! The, the one thing that, you know, kind of spooked me about it all what? was um, he has a song called uh, Let's Go Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. 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 And it says, don't let the elevator bring us down. And well, he died. One time when I was with him privately, he mm -hmm. said, you know what the elevator is, right? No. I said, no, what's the elevator? He said, well, the elevator is the devil, right? Oh. It scared me. You know, I don't like to talk like that. But he said that. And so for me, it was like really haunting when I read that he was found in an elevator. So what do you did think he, he meant by that? Did he have health problems? Uh, that I don't know, right? What I know is that um, he was really health conscious. He was a vegan. He didn't abuse alcohol. I didn't know of him abusing drugs. Mm -hmm. uh, he worked out, you know, so 
you know, that, that also really concerned me because it made me think that, wow, so you mean you do all these things mm -hmm. to take care of yourself and you die so young? Mm -hmm. You know, it really that, is that's a, what's so frightening to it, many it's people. It's so frightening. What about the androgyny? Uh, I think androgyny was part of the theater. Yeah. You the know, theater of show business? The theater of show business, right? Particularly in the era that Prince became famous, right? Uh, late 70s, early 80s, David Bowie, you know, yeah. artists it didn't like that, Freddie Mercury. It didn't Mercury. seem to deter women from Prince because he oh. had an amazing... Wait, wait, wait. <laughs>
Hunter problem. Yeah, they're still alive. And then we thought, who's good at killing celebrities? Me! That's right. Homer, would you be willing to acquire some more, um, uh, accounts for us? Well, you know, it is awfully hot today. <laughs> no, I'm too cold. Boom! Just sit here while they exploit our images. Thanks so much for joining us for a little bit more. I think okay. you can't say the name of your group without smiling and thinking of like that time in our lives that's obviously still back and around. Uh, you yeah. guys have so much fun doing this. Yeah, I mean, uh, we have great jobs. I mean, we sort of are moms by day, and then at night we can, you know, put the guitars on and, and play clubs and, and rock sweaty. and roll. It's fun. And people, do you have your fans who like have following you, but like know like you have all the kids. Everyone has two kids in the band, right? right? Yeah, has two kids. We have, um, yeah, we have a lot of fans who who've been with us since the beginning and who missed us in those years in the '90s when we weren't playing music. And we're thrilled when we came back. We actually toured Australia in 2005, and there were people who um, had tickets to a tour we had scheduled back in '89 that we yeah. had to cancel. And uh, so they, they showed up with their tickets. I still have my ticket, oh you know, and they God, were so happy amazing. that we were back. Oh, how As well as a lot of new fans who found out about us through their parents. Yeah, that's wild. You know, we have a lot of young really, fans, which really is great. crazy. So how can people catch up with you guys today? Like, where's the best way? Do you guys have a website? Yeah. Or? Best place to go check on stuff. Find that's out all, our the, website. Yeah, all the new news. Um, we have a great community, a great online community. People just who are very welcoming and talk to each other. So definitely post, you know, and it's very welcoming and lovely. <laughs> and then, uh, and then we're doing a bunch of shows this summer. You're still able to get tickets for this Thursday at House of Blues. I believe right? so. Yes. I think there's still tickets for that. That's on Thursday night, and and then Friday we're at the Orange County Fair. We're playing with Heart. It's going to be so. Special for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, for me too. Uh, Debbie and I used to play heart songs when we were in high school. You know, our our band. So this is it's a big deal. Oh, how fun! You guys have <laughs> never played together before. No, no, no. So you guys still get starstruck then after Absolutely. everything that you've been through. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, and where you guys just came from New Orleans, right? Well, we, we were there a few months ago. Yeah. Uh -huh. We finished a, a tour up in, at the House of Blues in New Orleans. So that was great because that's that's my adopted home city because I lived there for almost ten years in the nineties. We were actually in Vegas over the weekend playing at Mandalay Bay. Oh, okay. And the House of Blues there, yeah. right? No, no actually, at the, the beach. outdoor venue. On the beach. Oh, the beach. Oh, yeah. okay. Which is great because is you're really playing fun. to the crowd and they're standing in the water right in front of the stage. I mean, they, they get to be cool and comfortable. Yeah. 90 degrees or something at 10 o'clock at night, you know, yeah. but whatever. <laughs> How, what's the best part about touring now versus when you guys were doing it in the 80s? We get to take a little breather in between. You know, we were sort of nonstop for almost yeah. 10 years, and I think... That just kind of wears wears you out, but we get to have a little breath and have perspective and balance because we get to have our families yeah. and you know we get a little bit of everything. Plus it's kind of like we get to do it all. It's we fun. scale things to our own requirements. Yeah, now. we really well. Moms, we did. we're moms, yeah, right? We, know, come on. we multitask, but at the same yeah. time, we know we know our limitations. So. Now, were there? Um, you have a DVD that's coming out yeah. as well, right? That's August fourteenth. What's going to be on that? Um, that was the show that was our first show back. It was one of our big, 
made our shows return in 2000. Yes. So this is, you know, it was a concert that happened seven years ago, but it was special to us because it was one of the first ones when we uh, came back to Los Angeles playing on the Sunset Strip. It felt like a homecoming to us. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to share that one with our fans. It also was one of the last uh, recorded concerts with our, our bass player, um, our original, Michael Steele, yeah. our original bass player, who then retired shortly after that. So. Um, you know, so it's kind of special in that way too. Yes, definitely. Did you guys ever have, and I don't remember yes. if you did, did, was there ever a big falling out or was it just you guys wanted to take a break when you guys stopped playing for that period of time? It was painful. It was, both. It was definitely painful. There wasn't a real It wasn't like a fist fight, out. you know, yeah. there wasn't, it wasn't that it was sort like of a, a thing. Yeah, it was just yeah. sort of a exhaustion. You were worn down, yeah. I think, and then, and then people decided they wanted to do it. Susanna just, you know, wanted to do some solo stuff for a while. Um, you know, I think Michael was just yeah. exhausted, you know, and so we really need, I, I fought it all the way at the time. Yeah. I was, I was just absolutely adamant, no, this cannot happen. This is not right. We need right. to do this. And then within, right. within a year, I was not <laughs> you right. right. No, you were right. Oh. Because within a year, um, you realized, you know, I realized, I realized it was the best thing we could have mm -hmm. done. Absolutely. Because you were able to come back. Were you worried that the fans wouldn't still be there? If, or you, did never you, even know. Think about that? you never know, but, um, you know, I think it's, for me, I have so much more perspective on sort of how people respond to the bangles, and I feel so, you know, honored that people have a place in their heart for yeah. hearts for our music, and, and that, you know, there's something really fun about that time period. When you're in the middle of it, you don't you don't see it that way. But you know, right. it wasn't that it wasn't fun. But the music has a kind of a lively, um, poppy kind of thing. Well, it's a place in history. Yeah. I think. don't you think? I mean, yeah. it's a place in our pop history that exactly. Exactly. It did become that. I mean, that's that's amazing when you think about it. You don't think about that when you're in the middle of it. You're just worrying about. I mean, right. you're, you're so caught up caught up in the in the frenzy of that and now you can step back and say wow I go to a baseball game and they play walk like an Egyptian when they walk the you know uh, yeah, and, that's so and, weird and, and <laughs> my 12 year old like all his friends are like discovering the 80s yeah you know okay. so it's kind of like interesting on that level that younger kids are are sort of we're retro yeah you guys are like in, in a small cool way block, right yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, congratulations and good luck with the, the tour this summer and Thank the DVD so and everything. Thanks for being with us. And Bangles.com, right? The Bangles.com. The Bangles.com. The bangles. The bangles. The bangles. Yes. Okay, Perfect. great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Back in August of 2015, ISIS destroyed a majority of a mixture of Roman, Persian, and Mesopotamian ruins in the city of Palmyra, Syria. After Syrian forces drove ISIS out of the area, they discovered mass graves of mostly women and children, as The Independent reported in May of 2015. Opposition activists claim that hundreds of bodies littered the streets. They said that many of the victims were from groups or families loyal to the government. Amongst the dead were state employees, including the head of the nursing department at the city hospital and all of her family members. At least 400 Syrians were brutally tortured, beheaded, and mutilated in Palmyra, Syria. Now, as a supposed act of defiance, the Institute of Digital Archaeology, Harvard University, and UNESCO are erecting 43-foot-tall, 23-foot-wide arches of the Temple of Baal in New York Times Square and London's Trafalgar Square. And the date to unveil the arches falls directly on the celebration of the all-important pagan holiday, Beltane. Also, the anniversary of the massacre of the Branch Davidians at Waco and the Oklahoma City bombing, April 19th. Michael Snyder of the End of the American Dream writes, But these are not the only two giant arches that are going to be made. 
The New York Post writes that the Institute for Digital Archaeology ultimately hopes to put 1,000 of these arches in cities all over the globe. Michael Snyder continues, If you're anything like me, this is an extremely disturbing development. Ball worship is definitely not something that we should be celebrating as a society. The name of the city of Babylon is believed to have originally come from an Akkadian gate of God or gateway of the God. So could it be possible that we are laying out a couple of giant welcome mats for this ancient pagan deity by erecting these giant arches in New York and London. Could we be opening up gateways and portals that are extremely dangerous and that we simply do not understand? And for those of you unfamiliar with ball worship, it is public bisexual orgies and the offerings of the children produced from these orgies to the ancient Babylonian god Baal, or Bel, which means Lord, which is actually a catch-all phrase for a host of deities that sprang from Mesopotamian mythology. And if you think those things all happened in the past, sadly, you are mistaken. Another offshoot of Baal is that of the god Marduk, who can be traced back to the Sumerian king Nimrod. And Nimrod is the seed that branches out into a host of occult deities, one of those being the god Moloch, the very one worshipped at Bohemian Grove by world leaders. Uh, uh, London, we played 21 nights in a row and all the concerts were sold out. Uh, uh, London, we played 21 nights in a row and all the concerts were sold out.